Here we have uh, Joost and Ben from uh, OpenStreetMap Belgium, the, Bel the Belgian chapter of OpenStreetMap, that uh, will give us the Belgian perspective to building OpenStreetMap community. Thank you. Yes, that's us. Um, so I'm Ben, this is Joost. Um, and um, yeah, so we are going to talk here about building uh, a community in Belgium and our perspective, our experiences, and our story. Um, we thought about how we should do this talk and how we should structure it a little bit because we have so many ideas, too many ideas to put in one talk. So we hope to hope to concentrate everything here. So basically, uh, the most important part is our mission. So why does OpenStreetMap Belgium exist? That's where everything starts from. And then the second part is strategy and implementation. So how are we actually trying to accomplish our mission? So we define our mission, and this has been our mission for a couple of years now, uh, to grow and support the OpenStreetMap community in Belgium. So this is very important because it's, it's what we, what we um, yeah, it's our, our baseline, our base motivation for doing everything. So our goal is not to complete the map in Belgium or to promote OpenStreetMap, but it's to grow and support the community in Belgium. It's kind of different from, uh, from those other two. So now we focus on strategy and implementation. I will give the floor to my colleague here, Joost. Uh, hi, sounds so professional. Uh, that's what we try to do. Um, so our primary goal is, uh, and that's also what we've started with uh, in the first place, was to turn mappers into a community. Like, um, so a lot of us were strangers to each other. We only knew each other's nicknames. Um, so first task was to to turn people into faces or the nicknames into faces. Let's say. Uh, from there, you can start building in an organization and start doing stuff. Um, but we don't want to build a massive organization. Uh, I, we call it a network uh, organization in the sense that we just integrate with whatever exists uh, and don't try to do too much ourselves. That will return. Um, and then, of course, big part is growing the mapping community by uh, turning people who are not yet mapping into mappers. Um, so uh, you already have noticed that community comes first. Uh, so we want to be a radically open uh, community, um, which doesn't mean the same as being um, radically open source. We'll get back to that. Um, it means that we focus on being welcoming, uh, and we have an open leadership, and we work on open collaboration. We'll get back to all those things. Um, so in the first place, extremely welcoming. We want everyone to join. We want everyone to be a mapper, and we want everyone to be a part of the community. Um, a very practical uh, implication of that is that you don't just value mapping or just value development. We try to uh, value anything uh, anyone does for the community. Uh, for example, you have the Mapper of the Month project, which every month shows a mapper as a real person and all their aspects related to mapping. Um, we do have a, a kind of a code of conduct. I say kind of because we decided we'd have one, but then never actually got around to voting. Uh, I think that's a very good compromise. Don't also, mention that. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, well, yeah, well uh, Belgians are pretty good at making compromises. Um, and uh, when it comes to people who start mapping and make mistakes, we don't want to be uh, the mapping police. We see every mistake as a chance to teach people. Um, so uh, that means that um, a club like that, its its main focus is we want to be a club you want to join. Uh, uh, our slogan is is not is crazy about mapping, and that's the the one thing we have in common is that our community members are well slightly crazy and especially about mapping. Um, be uh, so yeah. Sub aspects of that is to be welcoming and to invite all people to uh, to join. Um, a very simple way of, of growing diversity in that way is just uh, not scaring people away. Uh, we don't want uh, a survival of the grumpiest. Um, uh, we want to we, we grow diversity by uh, encour encouraging more than just the the default skills you would expect. Um, and well. I don't know how good we are at it, but it kind of—I I think it kind of works. I mean, 
there's yes. probably a very, yeah, it works. Um, so, <laughs> but there's probably still a long way to go. Uh, we, we could go farther. So um, I look forward to more uh, presentations here about how we can go further with that. Can um, you can you hear him? Okay, that better. Yeah, I don't want to spit in it either. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Right, um, so the welcoming part, that's the first tool probably that we made together, um, is a tool meant to make it possible and easy to make sure that as much people as possible get a welcome message when they first start editing in, uh, in Belgium. Um, more than anything else, it's, it's a way to invite them to our channels, which include our meetup group so that they would actually get to know us as people too. Um, and a big part of it is also a validation part, uh, beginners make mistakes. Um, so it it's also helps us to keep track of who has uh, been watching uh, or, or watch, uh, validating new uh, data sets. Um, it's, uh, by, uh, the author himself says that it's really ugly PHP code, but I wouldn't know. Um, it works and several people use it. It's not just uh, me uh, who, who does it, uh, which it was in the beginning. Now there's several people doing it, sometimes no one. Um, so we try to do as much as possible. But it doesn't yeah. always work. So we have every every day we have new mappers, and every day they get sent messages and links to our channels. In there, well, we we guess what their language is, and then we send the messages. There is no statistical impact whatsoever of doing this uh, when it comes to mapper retention. So that kind of is a pity. Uh, but it does help uh, in in getting people to get to connect to our channels. That uh, I that we can clearly see. Now, um, Belgium is also an interesting country when it comes to uh, language. We're like a miniature Europe or maybe miniature world. Um, so it's not just in the North, Dutch and in the South French, you have all these things in the middle and more complicated stuff. And so we like to overcomplicate things. Um, um, political, uh, on the political level, it doesn't really always work that well, uh, but um, like us, uh, several, several other people uh, have solved the problem by uh, ignoring Dutch and French and just communicating in English. So we, uh, all of us are equally handicapped when we're communicating to each other, which is uh, good, I think. Uh, of course, it does, it's not a perfect solution either, because for some people it's still really hard to switch to English and, and we do allow and encourage people to uh, speak in their own language. Um, so all languages are welcome on our channel. And we think maybe that could be something a global channel could do too. Yeah, so this is my part again. Um, <clears throat> so open leadership, what do we mean by that? Uh, first of all, don't do everything yourself. Um, try to uh, involve other people in doing stuff, so give other people credits. Like you all said, value their skills equally and, and listen to feedback and communicate. Um, uh, yeah, listen to feedback from the community. And last but not least, assume you won't be around forever because we won't be doing this forever. So uh, we need people uh, picking up the slack afterwards. So this is an example, I'm not sure if you can see it all, but. This has happened yesterday. We needed to change the website. Joost quickly asked, is this OK? Somebody gave feedback. We adjusted our edits and done. So it, has, it could be that simple. This is an example of a meetup. Yeah, it's again the same picture, sorry. Um, and so people ask us sometimes to do meetups. Oh, can you do a meetup in our city? Or can you uh, come to our place? And then we say, yeah, no, but you can do it yourself. Uh, we, we, we have everything, we, we know how to do it. We have a meetup group, we give you access, we support you. Maybe we come there once just to give moral support, but it's impossible for, for us to be everywhere. So we try to enable people to do their own meetups. Um, and Mapathons, uh, also very, very, very uh, good for, for us as a team to grow because it won't really grow the number of mappers in OpenStreetMap, but it could grow your core team because you have volunteers helping out. They get involved with the rest of the team, and, and so our community grows. Uh, so open collaboration, also important. We work together with other open-minded organizations. Uh, we build a network around OSM users, so not necessarily mappers. Uh, we recognize contributions, and we are not afraid to work with companies, but yeah, you shouldn't be naive either. Uh, about that. 
Uh, so help companies to help OSM win, that means that we help them, we give them advice about OpenStreetMap, uh, we give them advice about quality in Belgium in OpenStreetMap, we try to help them win tenders for in public institutions, stuff like that. Um, we also help partner organizations to implement OpenStreetMap in their own organization, and we build tools to collaborate easier with governments, and this is something we did here. So we built a quality checking and correction tool for the Brussels government. They sponsored a team of students to develop this, and I have also, so we have also a talk about this on Monday at nine, so please show up there too. Um, what we also do is we work together with OSGO and Open Belgium, so um, we can organize two conferences a year by working together with uh, these two organizations uh, by sharing the workload. And now it's yours again. Yeah. So we return to uh, the being radically open, but not uh, necessarily radically open source. So um, I, I was going to do a, a, a quick check uh, here. So does anyone of you use Microsoft products? Any one of you use iOS uh, kind of systems? Facebook, maybe? Gmail? Esri software? Might I ask Google Maps? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see some, some even admitted. So we could ask all of you to leave, uh, but that would be the most stupid thing ever. Uh, so that's what we uh, try not to do. Um, it means that we do prefer when we can find open source solutions, um, but uh, when something else works better, then we're going to use that. Uh, for example, we. Um, uh, when it comes to instant messaging, we've, we, when there is a network that uses Slack, well, we join them on Slack. Um, but for ourselves, we chose, uh, it's also a kind of compromise, the Riot, uh, which works on Matrix. It's very, very open, uh, but it's also kind of user friendly. Um, and it has an app and stuff like that. Uh, and even our uh, core people who don't like uh, such things can still use IRC because it's linked. Um, but you see, like all the I, all the networks that are available, we will use them. Um, it's a bit like uh, Richard said: yeah, meet people where they are. Really like that thought. Um, so yeah, we're not about software. That's main mainly the the point. Um, yeah. So um, apart from this uh, general overview, there are some like specific things we learned from experience. I think the, the most important thing is do as little as possible, which really fits our personalities, perhaps. Um, but it, it means making place for other people, using resources at your hand, and not try to do everything yourself. Yeah, and then also important is that we found out that people, when they try to get in touch with the community, they go to the mailing list or the forum. And then they get these reply from five different people, and they have ten different replies, even when there are only five people. So we no reply at all. Yeah. So we 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 made this single point of contact community at OSM.be. We also have a newsletter, and our website is also oriented to the outside. So it means our website is for people outside of the community, not for the community itself. Uh, yeah, and we also have Dries, so thank you Dries, if he's watching, thank you Dries. Um, this is our guy from Open Knowledge, he helps us a lot, and he does a lot of the legwork. We don't have the time to do this, but he's awesome, Dries, thank you Dries. Um, so this important, it has mentioned, been mentioned in a couple of presentations before, so talking places people might not have heard of you before, so that's not here. <laughs> But, I mean, you should talk to people who don't care about OpenStreetMap and try to convince them that it's awesome. So that's also something we try to do a lot. So talk to where people are. Um, yeah, and this is important for me personally because this is something, you, you always get the same questions and if you've, do, if you've been doing this for a while, you, you get tired of the same questions and the same answers. So if you get tired of that stuff and if you sigh, if, if somebody asks you something and you say, again, the same question, I would say for yourself, let somebody, ans somebody else answer those questions because you, 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 you can get burned out on these kind of things. So please, um, yeah, and now we all three minutes. Yeah. Oh, perfect. 
Um, so what could a global community do for us? Well, I think the most important thing, uh, apart from this, of course, yeah, we want to, of course, be, have a voice in the OpenStreetMap Foundation, and that's one of the main reasons we became Oh, we became a local chapter. Uh, <laughs> so now we do have a voice. Uh, <laughs> yay. Uh, oh. um, the second thing is, yeah, uh, please be a club you want to join. Um, we would like the OpenStreetMap Foundation to be a place where everyone wants to be. And I, I don't know, that's not really the case right now. Um, and then when it comes to uh, very practical stuff, um, there are some very small things that would make our lives so much easier. Uh, some of them have already been implemented, like uh, having a, a practical community index, um, which is integrated in ID and not in Chosen. Um, you can follow diaries and stuff like that. Um, but there are uh, quite a long list of small things left to do. Um, if you want to talk about that, on Monday we're doing a Birds of a Feather at 12.15 about uh, community building and uh, the kind of tools you might yeah. need. Yeah, and also this is here because we are too small to do this. So we, 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 are, we can't do this on our own OpenStreetMap Belgium or any of the other local chapters, I guess. So yeah, and then as to close off, I think we have to be positive, all of us, OpenStreetMap is still the most awesome project ever. We have the best map in Belgium, so we, we always keep saying that every time we go somewhere, even if it's for people who don't like OpenStreetMap or don't know it, we always say, we are winning, we are the best map, and join us. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. I really... Obviously, I feel very strongly about all, everything you've said, if, if anybody talked, talked, heard me speaking this morning. But um, what do you think implementation looks like? So you have like a list, a laundry list of things that would be good. You told us to come to the meetup this afternoon or on Monday. But where would those live as ideas? Like how would we, what would be the next step? So let's say all these people in the room said, I can do small, medium, large of that. Would it live on the wiki, the OSM wiki? Would it live somewhere else? Would it live, like how would we implement some of those things? Like I think everyone, somebody has to own it, but I just, since you've done some really interesting stuff, I thought I'd ask a hard question. Warmly. Yeah, I, I don't know, and that's the problem. Because, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I don't know anymore how we can fix those issues. So I guess we can discuss later. I don't know if anybody can. I... There is a question. Great work, first thank of all. We thank you very much. I've stolen from you guys a lot. Uh, appreciate it. Um, my question is, is building your community is, is really great, but what does being part uh, local community mean with OSM Foundation? What does that bring you? I mean, you can start a community without being part of the foundation. What does that bring you? I, I guess we're about to find out because we, <laughs> we only just became a local chapter. I, I, I think the very practical uh, uh, use of it is that it gave us a, a, a kind of goal to work towards. Uh, so we needed to have a certain formality. We needed to have uh, bylaws and we needed to have a membership and those those are all tedious things to do and when you have an end goal of something that it, you will get in return that's really useful hi oh <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, which kind of channels do you use to to talk to your community and invite your com community to engage yeah, so we, as we mentioned, we try to go where people are, so we have pretty much any channel, but it's managed by different people. So we have a Facebook group, but that's managed by somebody who is on Facebook. Um, and we have uh, Riot, as I mentioned, uh, which is more a core group. Uh, then we have Twitter, we use that for communication to the outside. 
Uh, we have the mailing list still, but it's less traffic now than it used to. Uh, yeah, we have many different channels. Yeah, we have the forum as well. But it's all different channels, different use cases. Yeah. So I was just, um, I used the opportunity to ask another question about the same thing. Uh, how, what is the best uh, channel that you use to, let's say, ask your community to interact with each other? So is it the Facebook uh, then? Uh, well, no, that's more the Riot channel where the, and, but you, there are different levels in this community's things because you, we have this, we have this core group of people who are really active and they are on these channels. But if you want to involve more people, you have to reach out over the other channels. So that's, yeah, it's, it's different, depends on the question you want to ask the community where you need to go. Yeah. Uh, uh, an example is that um, beginners will often ask questions on the forum. Um, and then there's one person very active there. And if he's in doubt, he will come to the riot group and ask the opinion of more people and then give a summary uh, back to the forum. So it's kind of an interface uh, between these two. Um, yeah, my question follows a little bit the first question. What are you doing to um, yeah, enrich diversity in your groups? Because we are also running, for example, a meetup in Berlin, and our community is quite diverse, but for example, the, the speakers and the teachers are still mostly men, and it's, we have a really hard time finding more, more women in Berlin who are dealing with this. Do you have any practical examples what you did to yeah, get more diversity in, in your community? Uh, so I'm the first to admit that we need help on that subject, but we have Yorike, so <laughs> she's great. Uh, so <laughs> but uh, and then I think uh, the, our main strategy now is that we, well, the extremely welcoming part is our main strategy. I'm not sure that is enough, but we hope it is. But maybe it isn't. We don't know. But it's not like we deliberately have had activities to get more people involved that that should be but yeah it means like for example we had this this we had this at this certain time we had we had this moment where we had a meetup and then a girl showed up and everybody shouted yay a girl so that's not how you do it <laughs> and then i explained to everybody like so please next time the fact that she's a girl and showing up is not the, like she's she's coming here with the same interests as, as the rest of us. So that was yeah, that actually happened. I'll I'll just add something that we organize a lot of mapathons, and usually for the coming to the mapathons are a lot of yeah elders, young people, women, men. So usually the mapathons bring more diverse people than only yeah. the meetups. Uh, so yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, and also valuing the different skills, I think, also helps. But yeah, also, I'm not sure we need help. <laughs> to, yeah. My question is uh, somehow related to the previous one, and uh, yeah, is uh, how did you build the community? I mean, uh, yeah, you just you know recruit the people from the communication uh, channels, or there are some specific basins where you try to you know to to find the people. I mean, the mappers. Uh, I'll answer with an example again. Um, so we have Yurike, and we had a meet a uh, mapathon. And then this poor guy next to her was there, and she said, we're going to have beers together, and you have to come. And now he's a board member. So it's, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, and also I think meetups, just do meetups. That's the thing that works best, meeting people face to face. is the best thing. Thanks. We don't have uh, any more time for questions. Let's uh, thanks our speakers.